Hello guys, welcome back to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we're going to take a look at this. It is the Retroflag Jeep I... <laughs> Crap, wrong device. Today we're going to take a look at the Retroflag Jeep I case. This case has got several emulators running on a Pi Zero W. We have Game Boy, MAME. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the original 89 Game Boy. And on the right-hand side, we see the Retroflag G-Pi case running Tetris. Pretty cool. You can also play arcade games, such as this one. This is the original arcade game of Defender. So let's take a look at this awesome case that you can take anywhere right now. Alright, so as we can see, Amazon has delivered our G-Pi, so we are going to go ahead and open it up and take a look. The instructions here are very good, so you definitely want to go through them. Of course, you can also follow along in this video. I will go over the setup and assembly of your G-Pi. This cable here will allow you to play your G-Pi without batteries or plug it into a power bank if you'd like. And that's nice. It included a screwdriver with both a flathead and Phillips head on both ends. And here we go. The G-Pi case itself. We'll go ahead and remove this. Wow, that looks very, very nice. On the bottom here, that's where you can plug in headphones. This is your contrast and in your input for your power. This is where your Pi Zero W will be installed, which we'll do in just a moment. Here's the cartridge port. And this is your volume control. Very nice. We'll go ahead and remove the back cover to the batteries. You'll notice a little switch over there. We're going to discuss that in a moment. Alright, there's the power switch up on the top. Very cool. Now I made a mistake and pre-soldered the header pins some time ago when I ordered the Pi Zero, so I wound up having to order another one. <laughs> and this is the replacement. There's really nothing in here that you can use other than the Raspberry Pi Zero W itself. I just want to have a few extra accessories for later on. So here's the Pi Zero W. Very cool. Alright, so we'll take these standoffs and these small screws and this little connector and we'll put this thing together. Let's go ahead and set the screwdriver to the flathead. We'll need that first. You can't use any heat sinks, uh, at least not any that I have. They will not fit, so don't bother with the heat sinks. All right, here's the inside of the cartridge. It's got a little board here. It uses these little pogo pins that attach to the GPIO connector on the Pi Zero W. And here we have the little rubber cover that's going to cover the micro SD slot. Very cool. That'll allow you to get access to it. All right, so let's take this little connector and we'll plug it into the Pi Zero W right here. And let's see, we'll go ahead and put these standoffs in. There's four of them, go in each of the four corners. So you may find it easier just to use your fingers to get it started. So we'll do that, and then we'll go ahead and tighten it down. You don't want to get too tight on here, but you want it snug. You don't want it rattling around, so go ahead and tighten them down. And the last one. Very good. Okay, so this is a little bit tricky. You want to make sure that 
little black connector there is down and then push the little ribbon cable up in there and then push up on the little black piece there and that'll lock it into place. If you have any troubles with your buttons, most likely this is the reason. So make sure that connector's in there fairly snug. Now we'll put the cover back on for the micro SD slot. The size card you use for your micro SD uh, depends on what you want. You can use anywhere from an 8 gigabyte on up. I'm actually installing 128 gig in this one. We'll go over the software installation in just a moment. But yeah, this is it. Cartridge looks pretty cool. Alright, so let's go ahead and tighten these small four screws in. We're going to go ahead and flip the screwdriver around to the Phillips head. And we'll just tighten these little boogers down. Like so. And I'm speeding it up because it took a few minutes. All right, last one. Good deal. That looks really cool. All right, let's see how it slides in. Now that everything's installed. Nice. And as I mentioned, this little switch here, you want to switch switch it over to on. That's for your shutdown script, which we will be enabling. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll install these batteries. Put the cover back on. To make things a little easier for you, I created a web page here. So you want to go to wagnerstechtalk.com gpi-quick-setup. And there's a link in the description below as well that'll take you right here. And this will walk you through the setup. Of course, we are going to go through it here in the video. But for all the latest information, you definitely want to go to this web page. And it will help you out tremendously. First thing you want to do is download RetroPie. So we'll go ahead and download RetroPie. Click the link over here on the left for the Raspberry. Very Pi Zero One. If you need an extraction tool, this is a good one. 7-Zip. It will allow you to extract the downloaded file. Next, we need Etcher, so we'll go ahead and download that. And this will allow us to burn the image to the micro SD card. So once you've downloaded 7-Zip, you can go over here and extract it. And now we have the image the IMG file, that's what we're going to burn to the micro SD card using Etcher. So now we're in Etcher, we'll select the image, and here's the image. And next we will make sure that the micro SD card is selected, which it is. Make sure you only have one green check mark there, you don't want to wind up writing to the wrong location. And once you're absolutely positive, you have the right drive selected, hit flash. You will be prompted here. It's saying it's an unusually large one because I used 128 gig in my configuration. And the flashing begins. And it'll take a few minutes. It usually goes pretty quick. And once it's done, it'll go through and verify. And if you see these prompts pop up, just hit cancel. Don't say OK or anything, just hit cancel. OK, so now we are going to create a file. This is the WPA supplicant file. And we're going to put some stuff in it. And basically what this will do is when the Raspberry Pi first boots, it's going to use the information out of here to set up your network. So go back to the web page and right click copy and we'll paste this into the contents of the file go ahead and use notepad or whatever editor you want change the Wi-Fi ID and the password to your network ID or SSID and password and save the file
And once that's done, let's go to the download page on the RetroFlag site. And we are going to download the patch files. So you want to download them and extract them. Hit the extract button. And you want to navigate, there's a couple of subfolders there. Navigate to where you see the README file. Then copy the folder right into the root of your boot disk on your SD card. It'll be labeled boot. Now just double click the install underscore patch dot bat and press any key and you're done. Okay so now our micro SD card is ready to be installed in the GPI case so let's go ahead and do that. It's a little tricky to get in there, not too bad, just slide it in and we'll flip the cover back over. Good deal. Now we'll install it back into the GPI. Turn it on. Let's see what happens. We'll go through a boot sequence. It'll take a moment. Or a few moments. <laughs> okay, emulation station will start up. Now let's configure the buttons. So we'll hold down the A button. We'll press up on the D-pad. Down, left, right. Now we'll hit the start button down here. And select. And then we'll go through these other buttons. A, B, X, Y. Now the left shoulder is right here. It's kind of hidden in a way, but you do have a left and right, so we'll press those. And now we're just going to hold down a button for a little bit for each of the rest of these until we get to the select hotkey button. So you just keep repeating this over and over until you get all the way down because we don't have any of these other buttons to assign. And now we are at the hotkey enable so at this point we'll hit the select key and now we'll press A again on the OK button and our button should be configured. And we'll go into the RetroPie menu and go to Raspi Config. And we're going to go down to Interfacing Configure. And we're going to set up SSH. So you move down and then press the right arrow and then hit the A button. And we're going to enable SSH server so we can remotely connect. Now we just move over to Finish and hit the B button to go back. And we are ready to connect. So we'll start up PuTTY. Here's the download link for PuTTY if you are interested. It's also in the description below and on my instruction page. So we'll just enter RetroPie, hit open. We'll log in as Pi, and the password is Raspberry. And press Enter, and now we're logged in to our GPI, our Raspberry Pi 0W. On that web page, you will also find this is the link to install the shutdown script. So we'll go ahead and select that, right click and copy, and go back to your terminal window and right click, and it'll automatically paste it. Just press enter. And it'll go out to GitHub and download all this stuff. It'll take a few minutes. Just let it run and it'll automatically reboot your Pi. Okay, so now I'll show you a few steps for installing some ROMs. First off, we're going to install Tetris, which is the cartridge I have for the Game Boy. So we'll go to RetroPie, and we'll go down to the GB, or Game Boy, subfolder for the emulator. And we'll just copy and paste the Tetris ROM over to that location. And right click and paste. And now we'll do the same thing for Defender. So we'll go to MAME, MAME 2003, and we'll copy the ROM in here. So just right click, 
go down to copy and we'll paste it right here there we go so now we'll restart emulation station so hit start scroll all the way down to you see quit and then press a and tell it to restart emulation station and once emulation station has been restarted you will now see the Game Boy and MAME show up. So we'll go into Game Boy and we'll go ahead and load up Tetris. I have the volume turned down so I'll go ahead and turn that up so you can hear it. We'll go ahead and hit start and we'll just play a quick little bit here just so you can see it working. The screen looks great by the way. Now we'll hit start and select to exit and we'll go back and we'll switch over to main and we'll try Defender. Now I actually own the arcade version of Defender. Here's a picture of it in our game room. So it'll be great being able to play Defender anywhere I go. And now, we'll go ahead and put a quarter in. We'll hit select. And we'll go ahead and start the game. And I got out already. <laughs> hit start and select to exit. So yeah, this is the GPI case from RetroFlag. It's pretty awesome. You can run tons of different games on here. You can use it. NES, SNES, whatever type of emulator you want to run. And it runs fairly well. There are some games that are going to be a little slow, but uh, overall it's great. We're going to go ahead and hit the power button here, and you'll see the shutdown script take effect. And it's now shutting down the Pi, and the unit is powered off. Awesome! I hope you enjoyed this, and we're done.